carbon, carbon, carbon. Have you ever thought much about carbon? It's one of the basic building blocks of life. And after all, all of us in life forms were carbon-based life forms. And most of the trees and the wood and the environment around us is made up largely of carbon. So stay tuned, because we're going to explore what this carbon cycle is and what it means to life on Earth. Uh, Bill, that was good, but you got a little bit of carbon on your face there. Oh, man, I'm so embarrassed. Oh, sorry about that. Oh. So maybe you're wondering why carbon is such a big deal. Well, it is kind of a big deal. It's the stuff that living things are made up of. It's a big part of the forests and the savannas and, and most of the wildlife and animals and the oceans. It's in the ground. Even rocks? Even rocks. So you're saying it's everywhere. Yep, pretty much. And the, and the real interesting story in all this is going to be about carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a molecule that's made up of one atom of carbon, that's right here in the middle, and two atoms of oxygen. So that's why we call it carbon dioxide. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, so imagine we took all of the atmosphere of the planet and put it in this little cylinder, okay? All in there. Well, if that's the case, then this must be the carbon dioxide part, right? What do you think? <coughs> nope, it's nitrogen actually. We don't even use nitrogen, No, do it we? just sits there. Well, then it must be this other portion here, because carbon dioxide is pretty important stuff. What do you think? <coughs> nope. nope, it's oxygen. Actually, so you're, you're trying to tell me it's down here in this little bitty part of the cylinder? Yeah, carbon dioxide plus a lot of other little things floating around in the atmosphere. Well, That's uh, it. So carbon dioxide really isn't such a big deal? Actually, it still is. The next time you're walking in the woods, you might consider this. Forests are largely made up of carbon dioxide from the air. So where is all the carbon stored? Hmm. Bill, help us out here. Most of the carbon in our, our northern forest is in the ground. It's, it, it's in the soil. It's, it's organic matter. It's, it's stuff that used to be living, not anymore. And most of what's left is just, well, the carbon. Trees have a lot of carbon in them too, and it doesn't always look like this. A lot of it's stored in the trunk. Every year, trees pull more carbon out of the atmosphere to make another layer of wood and other tree parts. At the end of the growing season, some of that carbon stays in the tree, some of that carbon goes back into the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide, and some of the carbon gets trapped in the soil. In this week's viewer mail, Michaela Thalen from Michigan wants to know, do carbon dioxide levels change with the seasons? Well, yes, they do. You see, forests use photosynthesis, and photosynthesis absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Changing seasons affects the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere because in the spring, when trees are growing like crazy, photosynthesis moves into high gear, taking in more and more carbon from the atmosphere, so much so that CO2 levels in the atmosphere actually drop worldwide. In the fall, when some trees go dormant, photosynthesis slows way down and worldwide CO2 in the atmosphere rises. Like we keep saying, it's all part of the carbon cycle. And did you know that forests, or at least most forests, actually absorb more carbon than they emit? and we call that carbon sequestration. It's a bit like putting money into a bank account. So, when it comes to carbon, trees save more than they spend. That's right, and that is a big part of the carbon cycle. Now, trees can be harvested and made into products that we use every day. Hundreds upon hundreds of different things are made from renewable wood. For wood products such as furniture and houses, the carbon in that wood is taken out of the carbon cycle for a long time and stored. Other carbon-based products such as paper sometimes end up with its carbon in landfills. And also, 
we can burn that wood for heat or to generate electricity and the carbon that was in the wood goes back to the atmosphere as carbon dioxide where it came from in the first place. Using forests to manufacture wood products can be quite good for the atmosphere's carbon balance. But there's a wrinkle to this carbon cycle story and it involves fossil fuels. The burning of fossil fuels is the primary source of increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere today. Here's the problem. The carbon from fossil fuels is not part of the carbon cycle that we've been talking about. You see, fossil fuels release carbon that has been stuck deep in the ground for years and hasn't seen the light of day since the dinosaurs roamed the Earth. And that means there's more and more carbon dioxide entering the atmosphere. And that's not such a good thing. It could mean more intense storms, like monster hurricanes or city swamping downpours, and less frequent snow cover. And that means less skiing and snowmobiling. The answer to the problem might be in the trees. Meanwhile, baby trees are sucking up carbon dioxide faster than the mature forests. So if we managed forests better, or had more forest area, we could increase the amount of carbon that forests absorb. All this carbon stuff is pretty complicated. The Earth's not an easy thing to figure out. No, it, it really isn't. But you know, science and scientists are finding more and more about all these things constantly. So think about it a minute. Yeah, we can think of ways to use more carbon that's in the cycle, like wood, and less from the dinosaur carbon. Yeah, the dinosaur carbon, that, that, that's a good one. And the point is, the more that we learn to take care of the planet and understand all the systems and live with it, the better off we'll be and our forests will be.